Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of March. We're going to take a look at what the energy is going to be like this month. We'll see if we can get a feel for it now. I'm recording this on the 29th of Feb and the reason I'm recording this so late in the month is because I've actually been very unwell. I've had a severe flu, uh, cold and flu or whatever you call it. I don't know. It was sort of started in the chest and I've been coughing and sore throat. It went to my ear. It's kind of now it's sort of still in my glands a little bit. So it's done the rounds. It's going away. Um, I'm just really lucky that I got sick at a time when I had no sessions booked. I had just finished off a bunch of sessions and then there was this stretch of time where there were no sessions and I think my body decided it's a good time to get ill now. Mind you, I know a lot of friends have been sick at this time. Um, some of the people I watch on YouTube have also been sick. I did a poll, guys, and I'll put the poll on the screen. I asked everyone, is anyone else's year not going to plan? Because I certainly didn't plan to be ill. And, you know, I said, so far mine isn't. And then I asked all of you to let me know how this year has been for you how has the start of the year been for you and we have three options here i'm really busy no delays on my end just work and then the second option which i would choose which is so far my year is one delay after another and then i put a third option which i almost wasn't going to put and that is i'm still feeling last year's energy my year will start soon and for the astrologers in the audience it may well be that your year is yet to start because a lot of astrologers kind of consider well certainly western astrologers consider March to be the start of their year and here in Vedic astrology we can consider mid-April to be the start of our year that's when the sun moves into Aries so it's very typical for an astrologer to say that well my year is starting you know March April type time the other thing that it's interesting there is that in the United Kingdom the financial year starts I think on the 6th of April every year isn't that interesting so that's quite in line with Vedic astrology because for us Vedic astrologers we could easily consider mid-April to be the start of the year and it's really interesting with the poll because I was following it as soon as I launched it and the, the lead item was actually the third option but now we've had more votes come in and it seems like the middle option is the more popular one. But I almost wasn't going to put the third option, but I'm really glad I did because it helps me to bring up this point that, you know, some people start their year later and it's perfectly fine to do so. Especially with last year, I think last year was a bit of a tough year for a lot of people uh yes people are still talking about that i was watching one vlogger and she she has nothing to do with astrology she's all about fashion and she's just launched a video saying that 2023 was a really really bad year for her so people are still talking about last year um yeah let's take a look at the energy for march in brief i just want to cover the astrology a little bit first here because what i'm going to do is i'm going to delve into news there has been so much going on in the news it's epic there's just like oh we'll, we'll get to that in, in a moment i thought i'd cover the energy for march in brief because i know some of you just like to get an overview of the stars and then you want to get straight into your mini report so you can certainly do that but let's take a look at the energy for march in brief what is going on well i'm going to say that this month could be a month where tension is building up when I see, for example, Mars and Saturn close together in the sky, for me that is a bit of a pressure cooker combination. Uh, things can be really tough. Mars is wanting to get ahead. Saturn is being constrained or limited. And there's this pressure cooker type situation. And I feel that we're going to have that energy building across the month of March. I've got here, tension will crank up as Mars, Mars approaches Saturn. Um, Mars will cross Saturn will you know kind of go seemingly faster <laughs> than Saturn on the 10th of April okay so that is really the point of perhaps maximum tension but the tension will be building 
up to that to that date. Um, we've got eclipse season starting end of March, so that's the 25th of March, and uh, I will read how this plays out for each sign. That has been something that I've taken into account. I actually should technically be back in England right now. Uh, I changed the date of my flight to, you know, I'm certainly not flying on the eclipse, but, um, and by the way, if you have to fly on an eclipse, don't worry, you'll be fine. Just build in buffer time and just know that, you know, things might not be as smooth. Um, but yeah, I, I've booked my flight so that, um, yes, I'm going to be back uh, in England to do sessions in April, but I will not be flying around the eclipse. Um, this month we've got Venus brightening the sky from 7th of March onwards and that's going to be lovely that's nice energy we need some good energy don't we we need something positive and beautiful and something brightening up our skies and we've got that and I'm going to read that for every single sign Saturn Venus uh, will join Saturn in Aquarius I do think that's going to be a really nice energy perhaps not a romantic energy but an energy where you're loving life and you're loving being with your friends and you're loving um, you know uh, as, as I have said in, in past reports, and some of you have actually asked the question, why do I not rate Venus in Libra highly or Venus in the seventh house highly? Yeah, I don't. So Venus in sixth house, seventh house, 10th or even 11th, I'm discovering through experience, through practice, through working with you guys and your charts, I'm discovering Venus in Aquarius. It's not the most uh, romantic Venus, but she's very happy and she loves work you see and that's one of the benefits of Venus in say for example 6th house 7th house 10th or 11th you love your work but it's not the best for romance that's all I could do a video on that who knows when I get back to England back to my desk I will be um, doing some more in-depth videos about all these things now let's have a look mid-month onwards we have got sun and mercury joining rahu in the sky so the energies of unification unity coming together are all being highlighted this month so that is going to be important as well all right let's take a look at the news in brief what is going on in the world let me tell you there is so much in the news I don't know where to begin that's how much there is in the news right now and it's been really frustrating being sick because I've just wanted to come on here and do this report and talk about all these things but yeah I've had to recover and all that kind of thing so what I've got here is I've just taken some notes uh, about well about certain people on the world stage now there are certain things I'd love to cover but I just don't have time to cover you know sometimes you guys know I like to dip into the royal family news and what's going on with them every now and then I find that quite fun um, but it, it would be good to have a look at them again these are videos I might when I get back to England April onwards I might be able to find time to do some of these um, there's a lot going on with the royal family right now and you know two of them are really sick king charles kate middleton really sick um what else oh there's just so much i i would love to look at the charts and go into that but i won't uh taylor swift has a new boyfriend you know again that's a chart i would love to go into and talk about i know i've got some real big swifties in the audience and in my client base so i really want to make a video about her again april onwards i hope to find the time to look at some of these things this is election year and that is the really big news that I am going to cover I'm going to talk about the charts of well the Indian election first is what we'll cover so where, where when are all these elections apparently I heard a statistic that something like two-thirds of the world will have an election this year so how incredible is that right that's amazing um, we've got the American election 5th November 2024 I won't be talking about that now but maybe closer to the day uh, I will be British election must be held no later than 28 Jan 2025 so there will be some kind of election happening in England as well but this year and at this time of the year what I want to talk about is the Indian election because that is fascinating and 
that election is supposed to be April to May of 2024. That's coming up. And we're going to take a look at that. Another couple of things that I also wanted to talk about. Uh, let's see. So I've got some predictions here. I also wanted to touch on briefly. We've got Julian Assange um, still, uh, still stuck, still stranded for telling the truth. It's madness. Now I've got here that Australia might help Julian come home, which is an incredible development because Australia has really never helped him in the past. So I'm really, really glad that there is some progress and some movement for him. I've got here, let's pray. He is in a nine year. So at the moment he's in a nine year. From his chart, Mars is strongly placed to help him until the 15th or 16th of March. So he does have some support from the sky. Um, 23rd April to 14th May is another promising window to think for things to go his way. I've got some more predictions though later. So stick around if you would like to learn more. Imran Khan, that's another chart, uh, another person on the world stage who I want to talk about at the moment. Since 2023, August 2023, Imran Khan has been in jail in a three-year prison sentence for corruption. I've got here in brackets for selling state gifts. Again, I'll talk about his chart a bit more later on, but I just wanted to touch on Imran Khan quickly because because I wanted to look at the charts of both India and Pakistan. Uh, these charts are really, really interesting at this time. I've got here, when you look at the charts of India and Pakistan, they are both very, very similar. Um, this is because the birth date of each country is exactly the same, but the time and the places are different. So as I'll, I'll put the charts up by my side, you'll see that they are different charts, definitely. We've got here, it's interesting to note that Pakistan has had its general election already and the country is not happy, claiming that there has been election fraud. And it's really interesting that in India right now, they are talking about election fraud as well. They're going back to the 2014 election and they're saying, well, hang on a minute, there was fraud. You know, um, they have these things called EVMs, electronic voting machines, and this is being discussed a lot in India at the moment same as Pakistan. I've got here Rahul Gandhi, like Imran Khan, is currently the people's leader. When you look at who is leading the people, the people on the street, the everyday regular people, the farmers, that's Rahul Gandhi. He is there with the people. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll put some footage of him by my side so you can see that he is on the road and he is with the people and he's talking about things like food he is helping the farmers he's talking about education he's talking about the real things that matter he's working extremely hard which is very saturn in aquarius and i believe saturn is third from his now is it moon or what i'll have a look in the next portion uh, maybe it's from his ascendant but whatever it is Rahul Gandhi has got a superb Saturn at the moment and uh, boy is he using it so yeah I've got here I've been studying the charts of India Pakistan Rahul Gandhi Narendra Modi and what I'll do is I'll just list some predictions in succession so why don't we take a look all right Narendra Modi what is going on there I think now this, so this, I'll go a little bit off the cuff. Oh, it's very sunny. I think I feel like I want to change. I just had to change location, everyone, because I think the sun was on my face and it's just too, too hot. It's going to be 33 degrees today. So I've got to be careful. I've got to look after myself because the last time I did one of these in the bright sunshine, I got quite severe sunburn, which I still have. Oh. Is that a bird? No, I thought it was a bird. Anyway, let's take a look at the chart of Narendra Modi. Okay, what is going on here with Narendra Modi? What is happening? Let's take a look. Um, before I talk about 
the astrology for Narendra Modi. I do want to just share one of my opinions that I have of him and I want to talk a little bit about Vastu and the importance of Vastu um, because what I believe is so forget about Narendra Modi's chart let's look at Vastu because I believe that Ram Mandir which is a temple that Narendra Modi I believe uh, championed I'll use that word in late January I think it was late January um, he launched this temple and apparently it's been launched without adhering fully to Vastu principles and four Shankaracharya were invited to attend the opening of the mandir and they all said no and to me that makes me think that Ram Mandir is the beginning of the end for Narendra Modi I think the fact that he's gone ahead with that project and launched it anyway and invited big movie stars and politicians and all these people turned up but no actual spiritual people turned up I think that's the beginning of the end for him I, I really do and that's because he has not adhered to Vasti principles okay so that that is what I believe I kind of think that um, I don't know I, I feel like so let's let's take a look at his chart so we've got here that he is in Saturn dire period okay Saturn dire period is uh, Saturn fourth from the moon and that is a period that's full of ups and downs okay so yes good things can happen but it's really difficult things can happen as well this is not it's just kind of choppy waters you know um, and I've got here if the election is on in April or May neither month is hugely helpful to him uh, I had a look at his numerology I've had a look at the numerology of quite a few people I'll, I'll put it up on the screen so you'll be able to see just my scribbles here and the months of April what is it April and May yeah they're not good the May is better he's in a number seven year as well which is also not helpful because that could eclipse him out it's Ketu so <coughs> it could be that this is not a good year for him to have have an election if he wins it anyway I think we know that they used EVMs and all that kind of thing so uh, that's why I've got here I'm not predicting an election win or a loss because I feel it's pr redundant to talk about that when they are so corrupt and doing the wrong thing but what I will predict and what I will say is that he is in Mars Mahadasha and though his Mars is really strong yes it's a Ruchak Yog Mars um, I'm going to predict that he could easily be in court during this Mahadasha so that's any time from now until 2028 he could be in court very easily um, recently the Supreme Court of India ruled that money donated to political parties should be revealed no more anonymous donors okay and that was something that you know I, I believe Narendra Modi got into power and then fixed up the rules in such a way that it benefits himself and what he wants to do this is not a man who cares about the people that is what I believe I don't say that I don't want to offend anyone because I know that there are really big fans and supporters of Narendra Modi and that's fine you can still be a fan you can still support him but we do have to look at what's happening right now and right now the country needs a leader and that's where we'll talk about Rahul Gandhi let's take a look at Rahul Gandhi's chart by contrast he's got really promising stars across April and May which I was amazed to see um, he's in a six year so that's a Venus year you know he might gain the love of the country it's quite possible and April and May look at that April he's running a number one month May he's running a two month this is all very good I've got him Mars transits beautifully through his third house from the moon from 15th March 2024 to 22 April uh, and sixth from the ascendant from 22 April to 1 June beautiful right he's a good transit Saturn will be supportive to this man during this time got here Saturn is third from his moon he is in Rahu Saturn period 
with both transiting Rahu and transiting Saturn above his natal Rahu. The future is being built in this man's chart, in this man's life. And I've got here, there's something of India's future which is in the hands of this man. And the stars are strong for an election win here. So, and also the hard work that he's been doing. You know, him on the road with the people, people are, you know, there's a, there's a vibe there. You can just see from the footage. And if you listen to journalists like Karan Thapa and you go on a channel called The Wire, then you're going to see uh you know the awakening and the revolutionary things that are happening in india right now it's extremely exciting i also want to say that with um rahul gandhi he is he's called his journey that he's doing bharat joro yatra right so that's unite india journey that's what that translates to and what is that that's rahu in pisces so if you watch my Rahu in Pisces video, and if you watch my Saturn in Aquarius video, what we're seeing around Rahul Gandhi is all the things that I talked about in those two videos. I talked about uniting, people being united at this time. Saturn in Aquarius, the power goes to the people. And Rahul Gandhi has understood that, and he is with the people every day, working hard. And that is exactly the right thing to do uh, at this time. Whereas, you know, you look at um, how out of touch Narendra Modi is, he's putting on a diving suit and he's going to the bottom of the ocean. It's like, what? What? What is he doing? And it's almost like he knows his time's up. It's almost like he knows that that's, that's the end now. He can't keep running. Um, let's take a look at, so I've got some predictions for Imran Khan as well and Julian Assange and then we're going to get into the mini reports. So Imran Khan, I've got here, I think he's going to stay where he is through to August 2024. But the later part of August is looking like a time of some kind of change in his circumstances. When Mars will be third from his moon, and that's when his Antradasha switches to Jupiter's sun, which I think will be better for him. It was really interesting when I looked at uh, Imran Khan's chart and I was going back through the dates and back through certain times I've spoken about him before on the channel and I've noted that eclipses are really hard on him um, eclipses do not suit him they are they're really hard on him the other thing that's not good for him is Jupiter every time there's some kind of uh, Jupiter and I mean he's in Jupiter Mahadasha right now so you can see this is going to be the toughest chapter of his life Jupiter is, is, every time I've seen it sort of significantly uh, being touched or the Antradasha comes or whatever it is, like every time I see it, it's like, oh, bad things happen to this guy. It's so sad because um, <clears throat> I don't believe he deserves what's going on right now. It's, it's really very sad. Um, and in a simple way, I mean, Rahul Gandhi, I think, has also had it tough uh, in that I think if I've got this right, I've tried to look up information about it, but I've heard that he's not technically leading the Congress party because I think Narendra Modi passed a law or something or kicked him out for two years or something like that. Yet he is still working because he knows, he knows that there are fundamental injustices and that uh, somebody needs to be working for the light, for the good. Uh, That's what I see. Anyway, let's take a look at Julian Assange. Um, Julian Assange is in a nine year, as I said earlier. I've got here, this is a year of endings and major change for him. In Australian Parliament, there were 86 votes in favour of him coming home and 42 against. How incredible. That is incredible because I remember, I think when Julia Gillard was in power, I remember that she was not at all supportive and nobody was supportive of him here in Australia which I always found puzzling and sad and I didn't understand it he's an Aussie bring him home it's just yeah I don't understand got here as per the numerology for Julian Assange October is a favorable month for him to come home I'm also seeing November is a strong month for him Mercury Rahu Mercury starts on 19th November so Let's see, I mean, 
let's pray that any day he comes home let's pray that he comes home today let's pray that he comes home tomorrow let's pray that it's any day you know miracles are instantaneous and they are outside the bounds of time and miracles can happen at any time uh, miracles you have a direct connection with God and no astrology can touch you so that's what we've got to be praying here for Julian Assange got him Mercury Rahu Saturn starts 25th June 2024 so he could come home anytime after June this year as well the time through to June is very tough a lot of planets around his eighth house from the moon so he's going through a tough time right now and as I say we just got to pray for miracles to happen all right well I'm gonna um, just grab a glass of water or something and I'm going to start the mini reports in a moment those of you who are going to stick with me I'm also going to try and find a more shady location because the sun is coming on my face again so let's see what I can do hi Aries Aries welcome so this is Aries ascendant Aries moon or Aries sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so what do we have going on this month Aries well we've got Venus joining Saturn in Aquarius that's in your 11th house from the 7th of March onwards so this is going to bring enthusiasm and brightness to your social scene if you feel like going out with friends definitely make that happen this month okay if if you just want some time out you want to do something new you want to go out and definitely meet up with some friends it's a lovely time to do that now mid-month onwards we've got Sun and Mercury joining Rahu in Pisces and that's happening in your 12th house so you are going to have this kind of desire to escape the daily grind you might procrastinate a little bit more okay you might be feeling a bit restless a bit pokey a bit uh, you know um, you might find that there are some restless or sleepless nights as well with Sun being in your 12th house but that's okay because it's just a short time it won't be there too long um, I've got here read some beautiful spiritual books that's what if I'm up at 3 in the morning and I can't sleep and I need to read something I reach for something really spiritual um, or poetry or something beautiful something soothing read that kind of content uh, at that time it'll help you sleep a lot better and it's kind of nourishing it nourishes your subconscious when you read like wisdom concepts and principles and you're kind of returning yourself back to who you are type thing uh, now on the 10th of March we've got a new moon in Aquarius Purvabhadrapada Nakshatra happening in your 11th house so this is quite interesting energy because it's all about solutions if you can be in the energy of solutions and looking for solutions that's going to be good don't be in the energy of questioning is the key here so a solution to something in your life might come from a sibling a friend or someone or someone connected to you through your work and this is why I think it's important to socialize a bit this month or to network or be out and about a little bit this month uh, and equally a solution from somebody outside might come to you through someone else now it is a new moon so you can wish for something so definitely wish for new opportunities to come to you you can wish for things like fame as well 11th house is also fame um, popularity fame new opportunities uh, new streams of income you can wish for all that kind of thing at this time and then on the 25th of March we've got a full moon lunar eclipse happening in Virgo Hastha Nakshatra in your sixth house so there could be a major ending in your life when it comes to your work to your service in the world to how you do something in the world or to how you perform your service or your skill or whatever it is that you do there could be a major ending connected in with competitors uh, it could also be something to do with a legal case as well that comes to a big close Aries it's looking like a pretty good month ahead I'm wishing you well take care we are now going to welcome Taurus Taurus welcome thank you so much for joining it's so interesting Taurus I've been recording all morning and there has been very little noise I don't know if you can hear it I really hope it comes 
who comes up in the audience. But for you, Taurus, and I'm going to keep rolling. I'm going to, normally, sometimes I stop the camera and I'm like, oh, I better wait. But no, this is an omen. We're taking it because I'm doing readings here. So let's take it. It's a rubbish truck. <laughs> so pretty sure that's what that is. Yes, it's a rubbish truck. The rubbish is being taken out, Taurus. I think you're closing some kind of major cycle. And I'm wondering, is it recycling or is it just the rubbish? Do you know, I think it's just the rubbish. I don't think there's any recycling. I think you're ending something massive here and I think something is being taken away uh, for good. So I think you're getting a major clean out, clear out. Maybe your aura is getting a clear out. We're going to see what's in the notes here. Yep, that looks like the rubbish truck. Yeah, okay, okay, that's for you, Taurus. So something major is lifting and shifting and leaving your life. Good, sounds good. You're going to be more free. You're going to have more time. You're going to be more you, something like that. All right, let's take a look. So Venus is going to join Saturn in Aquarius. That's happening in your 10th house from the 7th of March onwards. So this can bring a love of work. Right, okay, yes, of course. 10th house, this is quite interesting. I'm also just reading ahead to see what the rubbish bin might be relating to. Well, I'll try and weave it in at the end and just see if we cover it off. But um, work is definitely is definitely highlighted for you this month. I've got here, this can bring a love of work, but not great for your love life. Your love life will improve for a very long stretch of time after the 31st of March. Okay, so those of you who are in relationships, if it's not going so well right now, don't you worry. It's just a little bit longer to go. And then you're just gonna have a good stretch where it should, things should just be easier for you. Now, mid-month onwards, we've got Sun and Mercury joining Rahu in Pisces in your 11th house. So this is excellent stars for fame, popularity, being seen, being recognized for what you do. If you are looking for work or looking for more clients, this is a really good time to expand. Now, on the 10th of March, there is a new moon in Aquarius, Purvabhadrapada Nakshatra, happening in your 10th house. So a solution might present itself at work. There could be a helpful co-worker or helpful boss at this time, but there's something about you magnetizing or attracting a solution of some kind. Don't be in the energy of questioning, be in the energy of solutions. And the 10th of March, it's a new moon, it's also a time to wish for something. And because it's happening in your 10th house, you can wish for next steps in career to be presented to you or that you accelerate in career or that uh, you move into something that you love to do, something like that. Now on the 25th of March, we have a full moon lunar eclipse. And this is going to be interesting in connection with the rubbish truck. I do want to see what this is. So 25th March, full moon lunar eclipse, Virgo Hastha Nakshatra happening in your fifth house. So this could be like the rubbish that's been cleared from your life. It could really be connecting it in here with this eclipse. We're talking about an eclipse. I've got here, there could be a major ending regarding your finances, regarding your wealth, regarding something to do with one of your children, like one of your children might graduate or something like that, or you know, one of your children might go up a level or something along those lines. Um, but I'm also seeing this in terms of your creativity now with the rubbish truck. I think it's sort of like maybe you're getting some kind of clearing or um, healing or something like this that's going to happen through this eclipse where just a whole load of static or fuzz or something that maybe has been blocking you from being really creative or, or moving forward on your path. That I think it's all being cleared away for you now. So, so take the healing Taurus that has come through for you. All right, we are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini, Ascendant Gemini moon or Gemini sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Venus is going to join Saturn in Aquarius in your ninth house from the 7th of March onwards. So this might renew your love for a subject that you once enjoyed studying. Um, it might ignite a passion to study something new or it just might ignite your love of study, right? You might be just so excited to learn something. And we've always got to remember that learning is what keeps us young. 
Now mid-month onwards we've got Sun and Mercury joining Rahu in Pisces happening in your 10th house. So these are great stars for work, great stars for career, you will be seen at work. This is definitely a time to perform as best as you can. It's a great time to get new work or to even switch jobs if that's something you're looking to do. Now on the 10th of March we have a new moon in Aquarius Purvabhadrapada Nakshatra happening in your ninth house. So it's definitely a good time to be in the energy of answers and solutions as opposed to the energy of questioning too much. You can wish for more confidence at this time as well. We do have a new moon here so you can wish for something. Just being distracted, that rubbish truck is still doing the rounds here. How amazing. So Gemini, maybe something is being cleared from your path or cleared from your field. Some old thing that you don't need anymore is being literally cleared out and taken away. So that is pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, as I say, 10th March new moon. We have a new moon here. You can wish for something. And because this is your ninth house, I'm going to say that you can wish for more confidence because this is happening opposite your third house. But you can wish for more confidence, more authority, more self-belief, more leadership um, quality to be enhanced in your life. You can definitely wish for all of that at this time. Now we've got a full moon happening on the 25th of March. It's a full moon lunar eclipse, no less. This is happening in Virgo, Hastha Nakshatra, in your fourth house. So something to do with your home might complete at this time. Now perhaps you finish a major renovation. Uh, this could also be in connection with your mother as well. Maybe a pattern or a dynamic that you've had with your mother. Maybe you outgrow it at this time. You expand beyond something in connection with home or mother, something like that, or something completes in relation to your home. Um, this could also be a time where something needs repair as well, where something that has been perfectly fine just kind of needs attention or repair at this time. But Gemini, other than that, it's looking like a pretty good month ahead. Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. We're okay. Cancer, what's going on? All right. Well, now this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon or Cancer Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now Venus joins Saturn in Aquarius in your eighth house from 7th March onwards. <clears throat> So this is a really good time to restructure your finances, to get on top of your finances, to review shared assets, anything to do with financial related admin. It's just a good time for you to deal with it, blitz it, get on top of it, do what you have to do. It's a good time to get on top of your finances. Now mid-month onwards, we've got Sun and Mercury joining Rahu in Pisces in your ninth house. So this is good energy to pursue new things that you'd like to study. What are the things that are going to help you build your future? So be future oriented here and be practical here. Um, I've got here, what would it be good to skill up on now or get good at now that's going to help you in the future? Okay, so this is not like the kind of study that you do for fun. Like, I don't know, studying the ancient cats of Egypt or something like if that's not going to help you 10 years down the line don't study that study something that's really going to maybe I don't know enroll in a film editing course or something that's really really going to help you um, this is not time for indulgence study I think it was Gemini who they get to sort of study whatever they want but you guys be good for you to be practical here and I've got here 10th of March, New Moon, Aquarius Purvabhadrapada Nakshatra. This is happening in your 8th house. So solutions to do with your personal healing and transformation or connected in with your family could become known to you at this time. You're, I've got here, yeah, you could be up for healing uh, on the 10th of March, New Moon, and that is a connection with family. This is also a time, it's a new moon, you can wish for something. So you can wish for a healing uh, for yourself, for your family, any of that. This is a good time to do that. And on the 25th of March, we have a full moon lunar eclipse happening in Virgo Hasa Nakshatra in your third house. So anything standing in the way of you being confident or you fully being yourself, 
can be eclipsed out of your life at this time. And Cancer, I'm really reading this eclipse as being a really positive thing for you uh, on this occasion. I, I think that this is this is lovely. And yeah, look look out for that. Look out for you know if you feel a boost of confidence or you get to be more yourself um, as a result of this eclipse. All right, well, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Leo Ascendant, Leo Moon, or Leo Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Venus joins Saturn in Aquarius in your seventh house from 7th March onwards. This is not great for love life. Um, but these are this is a really lovely pairing here for you to fall in love with your work you to fall in love with what you do again if you needed renewal Leo of like you know remembering hey do you know I really love what I'm doing you know if, if you have fallen out of love with something you can fall in love with it again and that's really good now from the 31st of March onwards the stars are much better for your love life okay uh, but yeah until then focus on your work now, mid-month onwards, we've got Sun and Mercury joining Rahu in Pisces in your 8th house. So you will definitely have the courage to do some deep inner work at this time, if you choose to do it. So perhaps you're facing an old fear and overcoming it once and for all. Um, this is a good time to be doing that, that type of, you know, deep diving into yourself. It's, it's a good time for that. Now we've got the 10th of March, New Moon, Aquarius, Purva Bhadrapada Nakshatra happening in your seventh house so solutions regarding your marriage or partnership will become obvious to you at this time and if you needed some healing in your love life then we've got a new moon here you can wish for that you can wish for healing in your love life or with you and your partner or just for your heart or whatever it is you can wish for a healing there now we've got the 25th of March full moon lunar eclipse happening in Virgo Hasta Nakshatra in your second house. So old memories from your childhood that might be standing in your way can be eclipsed out at this time. And there could be, yeah, this could be really powerful for you, Leo. Um, we're dealing with some old childhood stuff here. And this old childhood stuff that could be eclipsed out at this time, these things could be standing in the way of you developing you know your life now or these could be standing in the way of you progressing now being able to find the love of your life or save money or whatever it is so I actually think this lunar eclipse is going to be quite positive for you Leo uh, this time you could feel quite refreshed after this one you can always let me know as well in the comments below but I want to thank you so much for tuning in Leo we are now going to welcome hi virgo so this is virgo ascendant virgo moon or virgo sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology what have we got going on this month virgo well venus joins saturn in aquarius in your sixth house from the 7th of march onwards so there can be a real sweetness to how you serve others this month these are not great stars for love but this is going to improve from 24th of April for you um, but what you're gonna find across this month definitely is that you're just gonna love your work you're gonna love working serving doing what you do in the world now mid-month onwards we've got Sun and Mercury joining Rahu in Pisces in your seventh house so this is great energy to pursue progress on any big projects that you are working on it's interesting we've got I don't know if you can hear if it's coming up on the audio but there's some drilling there's some construction happening next door so if we factor that in you're definitely building something and you could be building something quite big um, now yeah any big projects that you're working on I've got here like a business like a book that you're writing like a social media platform that you're creating like a community that you're building so attend to your audience with skill you will be able to do so definitely across this month now we've got the 10th of march we have a new moon in aquarius purva bhadrapada nakshatra happening in your sixth house so solutions that will help you compete better in the marketplace 
solutions that will help you compete better in the marketplace will become very obvious to you around this time, the 10th of March. And because it's a new moon, that is a time when you can wish for something. So you can definitely wish for success in all that you do. And on the 25th of March, we have a full moon lunar eclipse happening in Virgo, Hastha Nakshatra. This is all about you, Virgo. This is happening in your first house. I've got here, this could be very transformative for you. This could be a time where old dynamics and patterns deep in your psyche could be eclipsed and transformed forever. And what that may mean is that you feel more you, you feel more in charge of your own life and destiny, you feel more connected. You know, this could, this could be really, really profound, Virgo. I'm excited for you. Take care, Virgo. Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon or Libra Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Libra, what do we have going on? Well, we've got Venus joining Saturn in Aquarius. That's happening in your fifth house from the 7th of March onwards. So your investments might get a boost this month. Equally, if you employ people, you might have fun creating with your team this month as well. If you have kids, you might have some more fun with the children. It, this is lovely energy. Venus transiting through the fifth. You'll be feeling creative. You want to have fun. You want to enjoy yourself. Now we've got mid-month onwards. We've got Sun and Mercury joining Rahu in Pisces in your sixth house. So this is excellent energy for being seen, for winning new clients for putting your energy into your work fully this month and you will find that you'll definitely be rewarded at some point and I just want to check something okay I just wanted to check why are you so similar to Virgo that now I can see because yeah Virgo is also with the Sun and Mercury in Rahu you know they're also working on big projects but you're working this is for you it's more service it's like there's a joy in serving and you know it's a really good time if you're very skilled to offer that skill uh, you know at this time you're definitely going to be rewarded okay and if it's not immediately you will be clocking up a lot of good karma for that to come in when say for example Saturn is in a position to give it to you which is not far away because March 2025 onwards you're going to have a great time Libra Saturn will reward you constantly <clears throat> now 10th of March is a new moon happening in Aquarius Purvabhadrapada Nakshatra in your fifth house so solutions regarding your children might become known to you at this time it's a good time to wish for children if you don't have kids and you want to create a family um, or you can wish for any kind of expansion in your personal kingdom at this time on the 10th of March and on the 25th of March we have a full moon lunar eclipse happening in Virgo Hasta Nakshatra in your 12th house so your spiritual side your spiritual self could be completely transformed and rewired at this time um, observe your dreams around this time your dreams might be giving you clues and look at what cycles are closing for you you might discover that there are certain things that just don't bother you anymore that you've grown beyond it that you've expanded that, that you know certain things that used to annoy you or irritate you they just can't Libra I'm excited for you I don't know if you can hear the next door um, construction work cranking up but maybe you've got some work to do maybe you've got some kind of construction thing to do I don't know it's really interesting <laughs> how that just cranked up all right well thank you so much for joining we are now gonna welcome Scorpio Scorpio welcome thank you so much for joining I'm just checking the time and the light it's okay I'm kind of I'm in the Sun here it is oh, it is pretty warm it's 33 degrees today and I thought that there wouldn't be any construction work because normally construction workers they don't work on the really hot days <laughs> so I thought it would be a good day to record but anyway it's a little bit of competition with the noise there all right let's take a look Scorpio this is Scorpio ascendant Scorpio moon or Scorpio sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology 
So what do we have going on, Scorpio? Well, we've got Venus joining Saturn in Aquarius. And that's happening in your fourth house from the 7th of March onwards. So this is really lovely energy. This is encouraging you to be at home this month, if that feels good to you. Good time to cook up something delicious and do some clutter clearing or make your space more beautiful. If it's been a while since you've done clutter clearing, you might have the energy and inspiration to do it. Now, mid-month onwards, we've got Sun and Mercury joining Rahu in Pisces, happening in your fifth house. So you might be feeling quite ambitious this month. You might want to grow, you might want to change your investments. I've got here be measured and if you get creative ideas, do act on them. You've got the energy, do it. So if there's some creative thing you want to do, definitely do it. But what you might find is that expenses might run higher this month. So you want to take care of this. It could be that expenses run higher, it could be also, maybe that your energy fluctuates as well, um, but it's good energy on the whole. And now the 10th of March, we've got a new moon happening in Aquarius, Purvabhadrapada Nakshatra in your fourth house. So solutions for your home or how you structure your days or something to do with comfort, something to do with a solution that brings more comfort may become obvious to you at this time. Now it is a new moon so you can wish for something, so you can wish for your dream home, uh, something home related, you know, or you could wish for a new car or anything really that makes your life more comfortable. And on the 25th of March we've got a full moon lunar eclipse happening in Virgo Hasta Nakshatra in your 11th house. So <clears throat> there could be some really big changes to your network circles. Or some really big changes to do with an older sibling or friends that you consider your soul tribe or something to do even with your popularity or how well known you are this could be something to do with that so that's on the 25th of March that big full moon lunar eclipse Scorpio thank you so much for joining we are now going to welcome Sagittarius Sagittarius welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Sagittarius ascendant Sagittarius moon or Sagittarius sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology now we've got Venus joining Saturn in Aquarius this is happening in your third house from the 7th of March onwards this is beautiful energy I love this um, it's great time to be social great time to devote to your hobbies or your passions or things that you love doing great time to meet new friends um, especially friends that you've known for a really long time this could also be a time where you meet friends that you're going to know for a really long time as well and we've got mid-month onwards we've got Sun and Mercury joining Rahu in Pisces that's happening in your fourth house so it's not the best month to move if you do have to move just build in buffer time just recognize that your expenses could go higher um, there could be some disruption, right? We've got the building noise next door. There could be some kind of disruption to the house, home life at this time. I've also got here, you might feel a bit restless. You might feel like you have cabin fever. If so, short trips might be the trick to just, you know, refresh you a little bit. And on the 10th of March, we've got a new moon happening in Aquarius, Purvabhadrapada Nakshatra, happening in your third house. So there could be some solutions, some very practical solutions might present themselves at this time. And because it's a new moon, you can wish for something. So it's a good time to wish for more soul tribe people to come into your life. And on the 25th of March, we have a full moon lunar eclipse happening in Virgo, Hasta Nakshatra in your 10th house. So there could be a real shake up when it comes to your work. Um, your work and career might be being completely transformed at this time. I've got here, it's not a great time to present new ideas or projects at work. Okay, and that's just around the eclipse season. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't mean that, you know, that's uh, for a long time or any of that, just a short time. Just across sort of March, April, I would say, um, just take care about. Uh, well, tune into the April report because I'll be talking about the, the second eclipse there. But definitely for this eclipse, not a good time to present new ideas at work if you can avoid that. All right, well, thank you so much for tuning in, Sagittarius. 
We are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. <coughs> so what do we have going on Capricorn? Well, we've got Venus joining Saturn in Aquarius. This is happening in your second house and it's from the 7th of March onwards. So this is really lovely energy. This is beautiful energy at home. Uh, you could experience a boost to your savings or an ability to save more money at this time. It's a good time to cook up something delicious uh, or you could treat yourself at this time to something expensive or beautiful that you want to buy. Now mid-month onwards we've got Sun and Mercury joining Rahu in Pisces happening in your third house. This is excellent energy to pursue your work, to present new ideas at work, <clears throat> you might attract new clients, you might attract new friends. It's a real time of growth for you potentially uh, if you're tuning in there to the energy of Rahu, Sun and Mercury. Now on the 10th of March there's a new moon happening in Aquarius, Purvabhadrapada Nakshatra in your second house. So solutions that help you to run your days, your daily life or solutions that may help you become more organized uh, could present themselves at this time and it is a new moon so you can wish for something so definitely a good time to wish for the big money to come into your life you know if you want big savings big wealth big security what is that what does that look like to you big big abundance I should say what does that look like to you wish for that and on the 25th of March we have a full moon lunar eclipse happening in Virgo Hasta Nakshatra in your ninth house so something blocking your confidence could be eclipsed out at this time. This is great, Capricorn. But here, see if you can observe your confidence go up after this eclipse. Yeah, it, it may well be that there, there might be just something that's standing in the way or, you know, we could always do, all of us could always do with being more confident. You know, we can all grow. So I'm excited for that for you, Capricorn. All right, take care. And we are now gonna welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So this is Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon, or Aquarius Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Aquarius, we've got Venus joining Saturn in your sign. Uh, this is in the first house from 7th March onwards. So this could be some relief for your physical body. Um, if you've been tired, if you've been unwell, Venus will come to help you feel good inside and out. So that's really good. And I know a lot of us <clears throat> have been sick, had colds, flus, all that kind of thing. I myself have been um, really sick uh, over the last, gosh, it's dragged on as well. It, it did not get better quickly. Um, but I tell you who else wasn't well, just about, you know, a good chunk of this audience here. I put a community post up and under that you'll see a lot of people have written and they've said I'm unwell too I, I don't have this my whole family's sick and everybody everybody's got stuff so Aquarius if you're an Aquarian you've got some relief here so that's good now mid-month onwards we've got Sun and Mercury joining Rahu in Pisces in your second house so you might be feeling ambitious to succeed to speak to grow your wealth to do things I've just got here, don't overdo it. Don't overdo anything this month. Pace yourself, okay? There are plenty of good transits coming your way later. So don't go overboard here. If you can work and do work, of course work. But um, don't overdo it. Because Rahu and Sun can be very ambitious. So yeah. I think there was some confirmation there. Now on the 10th of March, we've got a new moon happening in Aquarius, Purvabhadrapada Nakshatra, happening in your first house. So solutions that help you run your life better could become obvious to you. And because it's a new moon, you can wish for something. So wish for anything that you believe is going to help you going forward. It could be anything. It's a bit of wild card energy here for you. Wish for what's going to help you succeed. And on the 25th of March, we have a full moon lunar eclipse happening in Virgo, Hasta Nakshatra in your eighth house. So your spiritual side, your psychic gifts could be getting a total reset 
across this eclipse. That's pretty amazing. Got here, observe improvements and or your dream state at this time. Yeah, it could be, I mean, sometimes could an eclipse like switch something like that on, you know, could, why not? Could, an eclipse could kind of take out a blockage, really. I see it more like that. And yeah, it could be that your spiritual side, as I say, your spiritual side, your intuition, your psychic gifts could become more uh, heightened after this eclipse. Really beautiful, Aquarius. Take care, Aquarius. Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon or Pisces Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So what do we have going on, Pisces? Well, we've got Venus joining Saturn in Aquarius in your 12th house from 7th March onwards. Venus is brightening the scene. Venus is encouraging you to rest, to daydream, to take time out if you can. Work on your spiritual growth at this time. That's going to be really good for you. You're going to enjoy that. Mid-month onwards, Sun and Mercury join Rahu in Pisces. This is happening in your first house. So Rahu is going to be brightened by the Sun and Mercury. This could make you feel ambitious. It could make you feel like you want to do a lot, like you want to achieve a lot. But at the same time, you might be feeling limited or restrained by, you know, Saturn's in your 12th house. It's beginning of Sarisati. You might not be feeling able to grow, even though you have this real strong desire that, oh, I want to get ahead, you know. Um, but there's just this, you're in a Saturnian phase and Saturn does that. It's, it limits people uh, sometimes with good wisdom and good effect you know it's not always just painful and frustrating sometimes there's wisdom behind it so yeah I've got here listen to your body and make sure you rest don't overwork at this time I do think that you're gonna have to just sort of yeah, really listen to your physical body because sun sometimes in the first house can be very draining. Uh, and Rahu's there, Mercury's there. Sometimes, yeah, thing, things can be, you might be drained at times. Sometimes sun in the first house, like sun 12th, first, second, these can give headaches and things like that sometimes. Now 10th of March, it's a new moon in Aquarius, Purvabhadra Pada Nakshatra happening in your 12th house. So solutions that enhance your spiritual gifts could become very obvious to you at this time. Got here, be in the energy of the solution. Don't be in a questioning energy if you can around this new moon. You want to be kind of um, solution oriented across this new moon, definitely. And because it's a new moon, you can wish for something. So here you can wish for enhanced intuitive powers and gifts as well. Now on the 25th of March, we have a full moon lunar eclipse happening in Virgo, Hasta Nakshatra in your seventh house. So, oh, that's so beautiful. I wish I could show you that. There were these two white butterflies. Oh my gosh. I'll see if I can find footage of it. You know when they do that little, they do that little dance together and they, they're just doing that right here. Oh, that's a good omen. Pisces. You're the lucky sign in this whole thing because everyone else has had like construction sounds and um what else we had garbage trucks and but you guys got these two butterflies doing that you know they do that little it's like a little dna sequence dance it's very beautiful oh where was i saying that i think i was saying that around the full moon lunar eclipse <gasps> that's amazing because okay so I think I was just about to go because I talked about the intuitive, enhanced intuitive powers and gifts as per the new moon. Listen to this, 25th March, which you are listening, 20, 25th March, full moon lunar eclipse, Virgo, Hasta Nakshatra, your seventh house. Isn't that incredible? So your relationship with your committed partner could be getting an energetic overhaul at this time. Allow the divine to reset your heart and relationship to the highest good for both of you. And that's really interesting that we had the two dancing um that they, they were doing that little twirl thing the two white butterflies and there's oh there they are again but they're not together right now 
Let's not read too much into that part. Let's read into the part where they're dancing beautifully together. I'll see if I can find footage of that and put it in here for you. But yeah, Pisces, I'm wishing you well. Um, take care. Don't overwork. Don't overdo it. And you are in a Saturn phase. And anyone in a Saturn phase, boy, do you get to know limitation, you know? Yeah. My whole life is Saturn. <laughs> I've got so many limitations. I wasn't supposed to be sick. and uh, But I, I have had a big flu and gosh... I'm a lot better now and I'll be I'll be um gosh and it's hot here as well I'm just like oh sweating I'm gonna have to have a shower it's like 33 degrees today um I'll be back in England in April which I'm very excited about so anybody who wants to book a session uh, definitely book April onwards that's the time to book and you will be able to, if you wanted live Zoom, if you wanted a pre-recording. I do recommend my pre-recordings, actually. People, it's, it's the more popular option. Isn't that interesting? Um, people love the pre-recorded sessions. And I tend to think that, yeah, like, um, well, I've got a whole theory behind why that is so. But I do live Zoom as well. You can book that as well. It's up to you. Guys, I'm going to leave it here. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I want to thank everyone for being so incredibly kind and supportive while I was off sick. Everyone was super kind, super supportive. Thank you. Um, your well wishes have helped me get better sooner. And this has just been a long illness for me. I normally, you know, normally seven to ten days I get better. But this time it's like, so I think it's three weeks I'm still a bit sick. So this has been weird. But I, know, I think I know why it's been happening, because Saturn has been passing over my, well, I shall tell you, over my Ascendant and over my Ketu, so there you go. <laughs> Both of them very close. And today is the first day where Saturn is just like leaving those two alone. So that's really good that, you know, I won't have Saturn touching these points again for 30 years. Um, and it kind of makes sense because I've had an ear infection as well and like I haven't been able to hear and oh, it's been bad But anyway, thank you for listening to my ramble. You guys are my therapist <laughs> Pisces uh, Thank you for being here. Thank you for, for all your support. Thank you for your likes and sharing and um, subscribing and all that it really means so much to me and I can't wait to get back to England um, in April I'll be back there and I will be doing lots of content stay tuned I, I don't know how much content I'll do before I go I'll do my best but uh, I know definitely when I get back boy am I motivated to get back into my work and to create and put good content out for you guys to enjoy I'm, I'm really motivated so stay tuned and I look forward to seeing you next time.